Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 46th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going to be going over a hand I played in a $20 tournament. This hand was played online a while back. So let's go ahead and check out the action and see what I think of both my play and my opponent's play. So as you see, we are playing 61-20 with a relatively large ante. Anytime the ante is you know, significant enough, you should certainly be raising a wider range of hands because the blinds are effectively larger, but people don't really adjust properly. And you'll find this a ton in live poker tournaments, particularly the low and mid-stake events like $1,000 events and $500 events. And, you know, sometimes even up into like World Poker Tour buy-in events where the buy-ins are very high. Um, as I'm making this, I'm actually sitting at a World Poker Tour event right now. I'm about to go play poker for day 1A in about 30 minutes, so kind of cool. I guess that's what's on my mind. Anyways, um, right here I opened the 360, and I actually do not like this raise size. And the reason for this is because... There are a few players behind me that can shove on me, and if I raise from an early position and get re-raised, I certainly want to be able to fold my hand. So, like, if I raise here and then this player here with 3,600 chips or this guy over here with 3,400 chips goes all in, I'm going to have to fold, but I'd rather save an extra, you know, 60 or 80 chips whenever I do fold. So right here, if this was me playing today, I'd probably make it 280, something like that, just maybe a little bit more than two times blind. I think it's going to give you about the same amount of fold equity and save you money whenever you do get played back at. And, you know, you may say, well, won't that make your opponents play back at you more if they see a raise as like a weak raise size? And the answer is maybe, but the thing is, is that whenever I'm raising for early position in particular, I am going to have a very strong range in general. So I don't really care if they play back at me, even though I am folding out stuff like king-queen. I'm going to have stuff like aces-kings, queens, ace-king, jacks, stuff like that a lot of the time that I can be very happy playing. So I open a 360. Rolls around to the short stack and he calls. And this is sort of an interesting call because he should be shoving a lot of his hands. There isn't really too many hands he should be calling with here. I guess he has something like pocket eights or pocket nines. I guess that's probably okay. Um, he may think that calling with stuff like queen jack suited is good here, but really it's not. He probably should just fold because, again, he's going to be dominated by my early position raising range. Um, he could have something like pocket aces and be slow playing. He should probably shove ace king, pocket queens, pocket kings pocket aces. The reason he should shove those instead of, instead of slow playing them is because my range is going to be strong from early position, so he can expect me to go in my hand a lot of the time. I mean, one of the last things you want to do is slow play something like aces when your opponent has something like jacks or ace-king, and he would happily get it all in. So say I do have ten, uh, jacks here, or pocket... Yeah, say I have pocket jacks. Um, I raise here, and he re-raises. I'm just always going to go with it. But if he calls and the flop comes you know, king-queen-three, I'm just going to uh, maybe bet one time then get out of the pot cheaply. So... This is a spot where you always do want to apply pressure if you are in your in this guy's seat, if you have a good hand. This guy calls as well, which doesn't really mean much. He's a deep stack. He could have all sorts of stuff. So I flop top pair, which is certainly good. I'm definitely going to make a bet here. Um, I would prefer something like 800. So I do 720. I think that's a good size. Uh, that's going to allow this short stacked opponent to shove all, all over, shove, shove all in over the top of me if he decides to. And um, really, I'm just not looking to fold this hand here. If one of my opponents has ace-king or eights or threes, that's fine. I'm just going to go broke. You always have to think about the combination of hands your opponents can't have that they would put more money in here with. And guys are certainly going to go broke with stuff like king-jack, king-10, maybe even stuff like nine-eight or a pair between nines and kings. And if that's the case, you have to realize you really just don't lose very many combinations of hands. You probably lose to like one eighth of the combinations of hands, or one-sixth of the combinations of hands in the spot right here. And even if they do call, we probably have a live king or queen, unless they have a set. Or, you know, backdoor straight, backdoor flush draw. It, I mean, it's obviously not much going for us if we are up against a set, but you have to realize that's worst-case scenario, and even then it's not, like, the super end of the world. So, I bet 720, and now this short guy calls. And at this point, I think his call's a little bit peculiar, because if I think if he had a king, he would probably go all in. Although, you know, he shouldn't actually go all in here if he does have a king. If he does have something like king jack or king ten, he should probably call and hope that I bluff off later. Um, because if he shoves here and I cannot, I don't have a king, I'm just going to fold. So by shoving, he's, he's going to get a lot of my worst hands to fold. Like, say I had pocket tens here and I elected to bet. If he jams here, I'm just going to fold. And that's not really what he wants to happen whenever he has a king. So I actually do like his call assuming he has a king, but... I don't think he does. Um, whenever a guy does call here, though, in like a $20 tournament, especially a guy that just called preflop, I'm going to expect him to have something like 9-8 or maybe a middle pair of some sort that he just decided to not re-raise. Maybe something like 9s, 10s, jacks. He could have something like king-jack and just be playing a little bit slow, but 
I really do expect most players to make just a standard error of shoving here with a king. So the turns of four, now I have to decide if I want to check to try to induce a bluff, or if I want to shove just to try to get full value and get all the money in right here. And I think this is actually a close spot because there aren't really very many, there aren't many draws out here that are available at the moment. So if I shove, my opponent pretty much has to have a made hand to call. So that's one thing to take into account. Since I don't think my opponent has a king that often, he can't really have that good of a made hand. So that should make me check because my opponent's probably drawing thin. And if I shove, he may fold. The problem is that if I check, I'm not too sure he'll bet if he does have something like pocket nines here. Uh, I think if he has a king, he'll bet all, every time. But you have to re realize that we're not really trying to get value out of those kings because we're going to get full value out of those anyways. I mean, the guy's never folding a king unless maybe an ace comes on the river. So I don't really have to worry about that part of his range. I'm more so concerned we're getting value out of the nines, tens, jacks, ace eight, nine eight, eight seven, stuff like that. So taking all that into account, I think I should actually check here. And that may surprise some people because they're like, oh, you don't want to get outdrawn. You want to you want to shove to force the guy to make a bad call, but I don't think he's going to, I don't think he's going to make a bad call every time. I think he certainly will some percentage of the time, but I don't think he will every time. And because of that, I think we're better off checking, the turn's probably going to go check, check. Then on the river, I can go all in and he, he probably will call at that point because now my range will look significantly weaker. So I do shove here. I don't like it, but uh, he calls off with jacks anyway. So this is one of those, that part of the range that I was concerned that I would not get full value out of, but turns out I didn't anyway. Anyways, uh, at, the way he should have played his hand is he should have just shoved preflop. If he shoves preflop here, I fold, he avoids the coin flip spot, and he picks up a nice uh, 675 chips. But instead, he slow played it a little bit, and then he got a bad flop and didn't believe me. And that's kind of the exact opposite way you want to play those middle pairs. Um, you know, you're not really concerned about getting outdrawn, but you're more so concerned about getting bad flops and then having tricky spots. And certainly, he doesn't need to just automatically fold on King XX, but... If I'm willing to put my whole stack in on the turn, this guy's toast every time. So that's that. If you guys have any questions or comments about this week or any other, please feel free to let me know. And also be sure to check out uh, floattheturn.com. I've been starting to run group coaching sessions on there that everyone has been loving. So if you have any interest in that, email support at floattheturn.com, and I'll get you info on that. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll be back next week.